Hello. Welcome back to Honey Badger's 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're, take, we're checking out high temperature filaments on the Gufu Mido. But first of all, roll those credits. Right, so today, yeah, we are looking at the high temperature review of the Gufu Mido. So the uh, regular Gufu Mido comes with a hot end that goes to 270 degrees, um, but it also, you can buy a 400 degree hot end. Um, there's only one material that we couldn't print with this that we tried, um, and I'll go into those materials at the minute. I'm not really going to go through too much um, how, how different this hot end is. The main thing about it is that this is, a, is machined out of solid brass and there's a copper throat and there's a KTC thermistor rather than an NTC thermistor. Other than that, this really isn't that different from the regular one. The heating block is significantly larger just because of the amount of heat that it has to generate. Um, but, uh, but overall, it, it is very, very similar. The other thing that Mido sent us was this. So this is their carbon fiber bed. And from what I can tell, it is genuine, proper carbon fiber. So the regular bed that the Gufu comes with is, um, is a magnetic PEI sheet that is removable. The problem is, is as soon as you start going to above about 80 degrees on a magnetic bed, it loses its magnetic cohesion and the bed just comes off and it starts to lift in the corners, causes you all sorts of problems. Um, I've had to use a few layers of hairspray on this, and for the vast majority of the materials that I've printed, um, that seems to have been enough. However, when you start to move into engineering grade materials, right, your nylons, your peaks, your CPEs, and things like that, there are special conditions that are generally required to print really any of those materials. And generally speaking, you would set up a single machine specifically to print those parts. So you would set up a machine with the perfect conditions, you tune and everything else to print nylon. We've spent a fair amount of time doing the prints that we're doing. It's worth noting that we have not in, been sitting there and trying to get the perfect nylon profile or the perfect ASA profile because that's not what this video is about. This video is about if you're using this hot end, can it physically print those materials? So there may be some under extrusion, there may be some over extrusion, there may be various things. All I care about is can this reliably melt and extrude the higher temperature filaments without clogging all the time, without destroying the nozzle, um, that, it can, that it can actually output a model and then if you had that material, you would spend a fair chunk of time sitting down trying to, um, trying to figure out what you wanted to do with it and, and, and getting that uh, profile perfectly dialed in. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the prints that we have done. Right, so first thing I want to point out is that we printed all of these with, um, with sample filaments. So they were very, very short filament things. Um, it sometimes took us a couple of goes just to get the filament to actually extrude. The settings were really particular. Um, the biggest issue we had really with any of these was absolutely getting it to um, stick to the bed. So I don't think that's the fault of this particular bed, of that carbon fibre bed. I think that's actually to do with, um, with the fact that some of these require special conditions like ABS slurries or specific compounds that help them to adhere or whatever we're doing. So first things first, Taluman 910. So this, get that to focus. Taluman 910. This is a filament that prints at, um, at 250 degrees. It needs 110 on the bed, um, no fan, and uh, it's really strong. So this is actually, this is actually a nylon blend. Um, the cube actually came out fairly well. Uh, there's a little bit of pitting and things down the side, but overall, 
not a terrible not a terrible cube to come out of it genuinely impressed that it managed to print that i've used other tally man filaments they've not been ideal polymaker pc so polymaker pc i think probably came out hold on there we go probably came out the nicest of all these filaments so this one prints this is the polymax pc it prints at 280 and 100 on the bed um, the fan is off and I'll be honest, really nice. This one's got like a softening temperature of about 117 degrees. So it's, it's fairly temperature resistant. The, the cube came out quite nicely. I was fairly impressed with that. Polylite ASA. So we managed to get both a cube and a rough looking benchy out of it. This prints at 290 with uh, 100 on the bed, fan off. Uh, softening temperature is about 105 degrees. It's got a good tensile strength and things like that. If you tuned your profile effectively, you could get rid of all the stringing and everything else. But I mean, that is not a terrible cube and it's also not a terrible benchy. So, um, I mean, well, it is a terrible benchy, but it's a terrible benchy on retractions. So maybe the heat was a little bit too high. Maybe the retractions weren't quite high enough. Again, profile tuning. What's important is it's stuck to the bed and it printed. We come on to polyma Polymide's Co-PA. So this one it struggled with a little bit. Um, you can see there's some sort of, there's some rough extrusion issues on that. Um, there's a little bit of a warp on the bottom. Again, bed adhesion. But it did print a benchy, a rough benchy, again, but it did print one. So that wasn't terrible. Polylights PC. Now, of all the parts that we printed by the, by the CPE that we did before, um, this really did actually come out quite nicely. It's a pretty respectable cube. It's stuck to the bed. It extruded nice and consistently. Um, really, really nice. This one prints at 280 on the hot end, 100 on the bed. Softening temperature is 120 degrees, so I was quite impressed that it managed to do that. Um, this is Filamentum's PA6 nylon. Now, nylon, normally, you need a heated build enclosure to do. You, this isn't a heated build enclosure on this. You can see that this is not the finest cube that's ever been created, but my God, I've stood on this, and it is incredibly strong. So this is a nylon. Um, it stuck to the bed fine. Uh, this was 295 on the hot end, 110 on the bed, and, um, and the fan was off. And I'll be honest, I was really surprised that it did this one. But it did, so fair play to it. And then last but not least, another really nice one. This is Filamentum's CPE HG100. Prints at about 275 on the hot end. I think, again, it was about 100 on the bed. And here we have the results. So this, hold on, get that to focus, there we go. This looks very similar, really, to a PET G. That's the sort of effect. Now the cube that came out was really nice. Really nice sides, really nice top, stuck to the bed, lovely, good first layers. The benchy is not horrendous, but you can see that on the overhangs, focus up, you can see where it changed. So it started off really nicely, and then it, uh, the overhangs did suffer a little bit on that. But again, with tuning, I think you could get that to print absolutely gorgeous. So we've already done a review on the uh, on the machine printing at regular temperatures. Your ABS is um, it's also printed ASA on the lower head, on the uh, lower temp hot end, PET Gs, PLAs, TPUs, and all that sort of stuff. Um, this was supposed to really be focusing on whether or not it was capable of printing higher temperature engineering grade filaments. There is only one filament that we failed to print. The one filament we failed to print was PSU. Now PSU prints at about two eight, uh, sorry, about 380 on the hot end and 120 on the bed. The maximum temperature this machine can go to is 120 on the bed and 400 on the hot end. So we were really pushing that. Um, that filament 
does require an ABS slurry to be on the bed to get proper adhesion. Um, or a particular type of captain tape that I didn't have. Uh, or there was um, there was a special like adhesion spray or something that you can buy from that particular manufacturer, um, which is Thermax, I think it's called. Um, PSU is a really uh, it's a fire retardant temp uh, filament, so um, so you could it, it, it doesn't deform before about two fifty or something like that. Like it's really high. Um, I did everything I could to try and print that. Um, but we just ran out of the sample before we actually managed to get it to stick. Um, the sample was actually fairly expensive. The filament itself is very expensive. It's about £75 for 250 grams. It's a very specialised material, um, and we just couldn't get that to print. That was the only one that it failed to do, and to be fair, it was extruding the filament, I just could not get the filament to stick to the bed. Now, because this bed here is the high temp bed is, is carbon fiber, I was not ready to slather that in, um, in an ABS slurry or do anything else to it because once you ruin that, it is just ruined. If, you're, if you were setting up this machine to just print PSU, go ahead because you need to get it to do it and it will. I do genuinely believe that with tweaking and with, with a few, you know, with a bit of fanning about, you would be able to get it to do it. Um, but we couldn't. So that was the only material that we couldn't do. Everything else that we did, all of those polymakers, the filamentum stuff, that all, that all worked fine. Um, so is this machine worth buying? And more importantly, is the machine worth buying and then paying the extra for the 400 degree kit and the carbon fibre bed? So first off, let's talk carbon fibre bed. I genuinely really like the carbon fibre bed. Um, I found with the touch of hairspray, stuff did stick to it really well. Um, the only criticism I have, if any, is that, um, is that the, the bed can be a little bit difficult to get off. The magnet is, seems to be really strong. So you have to sort of really push up on it. Um, and I feel like that's going to really screw with your bed level and things like that. So um, it's fine. I really like the carbon fibre bed and it certainly worked with the higher temp pieces. We went up to 120 degrees and the magnetic, it never, the bed never came off and the bed did get to that temperature. Um, the, hot, the, the hot end. If you have a need to print the likes of copolymers, PCs and things like that, <laughs> Um, I, I genuinely think the hot end kit is worth it. Like, like there's not many machines that can print 400 degrees on the hot end without you going out and buying a custom hot end that you then have to configure and set up and everything else. There's a tutorial video up on the channel of how really how, how easy this is to change over. It's the two plugs up here on the daughter board, and there's one plug change in the um, in the inside the main board. And then you run a bit of G-code and you're away. Um, so the process to change this, really, really easy. Um, they've put a lot of thought and design into that. Overall, I'm really impressed with this machine. If I have one criticism, um, and it's only a specific use case for me, is that that build volume on the Mido, um, I personally find a little limiting. And the only reason I find it limiting is because of the size of the models that we do on the channel. Um, you know, I'm, I'm used to 300 by 300 by 400 build volumes. And as a result, not having that, um, it does feel a bit like a handicap. But at the same time, what it does print is really, really nice parts. I mean, again, I know that these, these calibration cubes and things, they look rough. But they only look rough because we haven't tuned the profiles, right? PLA, PETG, ABS, they're relatively easy to print with. Um, and as a result, you don't require that much tweaking. When you get into engineering filaments, that game changes. Um, there's only one other downside that I can think of, and that is that this is not a heated enclosure. When you get to engineering filaments, it does require you to have a certain... It does require certain specialist things, depending on the filament you're trying to print. Certainly with things like the nylons and stuff like that. Um, nylon's hydroscopic, so it just sucks all the moisture out of the air. But the spool holder on this is at the back. 
Now, if you don't live in a high moisture environment, that's not an issue. If you do live in a high moisture environment, you would normally want that spool holder to be internal to the machine so that it didn't just absorb moisture from everywhere. It had some sort of protection. Um, if you have a specialized use case, you need to make sure the machine does check all those boxes for you. Yeah, if you want to be printing nylons, if you want to be printing peaks and things like that, there's a chance this may not be the machine for you. However, if you're like us, and what you print generally is your ABSs, your PLAs, PETGs, TPUs, things like that, this machine storms through those. And you can see that with the likes of that, so what was this one? This one was the, this one was the CPE HG100 from, um, from Filamentum. And I am got to be honest, that calibration cube on this is astonishingly good. That's a high temperature filament. It prints at 285. And my God, that, that chewed through that. It, it is absolutely printing it gorgeously. It's a lovely color. Um, this one's called Deep Sea. Um, but, uh, but yeah, really, really nice. So final thoughts. We have, a, we have a sort of a tradition of trying to rate machines. So as a regular machine, without the hot end and without the, um, without the carbon fiber bed, I would rate this machine a solid eight out of 10. Solid eight out of 10. That is a good machine. It is a bit expensive, but it's a good machine. If we were to move to the high temp side, I would put this at around a nine out of 10. And the only reason I'm not giving it a 10 is because no heated build enclosure and the build volume is a little limiting. When you're doing engineering parts, I don't think there's that many people that are doing giant nylon parts. Generally, they're sort of smaller pieces. So I think for that, it's going to be absolutely perfect. It's only a little limiting for me because of the size of stuff that we do. Um, I am very, very happy with this machine. Would I pay the £1,100 for it? If I had a genuine reason for requiring what it does, I'd definitely pay the money. This is turning out prints as good as any Ultimaker, any Ray's 3D machine, and they're three times the price. And I don't know many Ultimakers that go to 400 degrees on the hot end. Like, they just, they just don't. Um, it's a really good machine. I'm properly happy with it. Um, we'll have a couple more videos of uh, some functional parts and things that we're probably going to print as well. But thanks for joining. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you all soon.